Good morning. Good morning. It is, do you know what? I don't even know what day it is. I think we've got to the point in our trip where we do know it's our last day, but I honestly yeah. couldn't tell you where we are in the world. I think it's Tuesday? It doesn't matter. It's completely invisible. <laughs> anyway, it is our last day. We are gonna. We're doing some sailing. We're doing our final sail with Nikki and Jason. So we're again super excited. It's kind of different sea states. A bit calmer today, but nonetheless, our, our last sail. Yeah. So we're, kind of... we're going back to Tahiti um, today. We're in Moria at the moment, and we're gonna sail around the island back to Tahiti um, for yeah to get our plane in the morning. You know, it's just been. An amazing week, hasn't it? We've had... Epic. I think epic is a good word. <laughs> it's epic. It's a very Australian word. It's been yeah. epic. Uh, it has actually been quite epic. Yeah, it has been epic yeah. and yeah. We've done so many things. We've like snorkeled these beautiful reefs. We've kind of snorkeled and, and swam with rays and sharks. We've like done quite a substantial hike that my thighs are still feeling the effects of. A lot of laughs, a lot of really great conversations we've met some cool people apart from Nicky and Jason some really nice other cruisers yeah. and yeah literally in a week's time I'll be back in in London and in 10 days time I'll be back with Ruby Rose so yeah. kind of I'm looking forward to seeing her getting the anti-fouling done getting her ready for our next season yeah. and you know we've come away with lots of amazing ideas we really have learned from Nick from Nicky and Jason I mean unsurprisingly <laughs> unsurprisingly but not because not just because they're like oh do this do this do this but you watch other people who they are uh, I don't think there's any any harm in saying this they are considerably more professional in every single aspect of their lives than we are and so it's like oh that's how you do that oh isn't that a clever way of doing things and I'm just like oh, yeah yeah. Um, yeah so awesome it's, it's been great. so yeah it's kind of like in, in 10 days I'll be in Spain so on with the sale yes mother and trying to explain to her that I'm not coming home. <laughs> In fact, maybe you can call her and try and explain that. The weather is super moody and it has been for the last couple of days actually. So, I mean, sunshine is fantastic, obviously. It's really beautiful when the sun's out and the water's like really bright blue and gorgeous, but these kind of days, these kind of, this kind of moody weather, I actually really like it. briefly. Yep. Should we turn around and go like to the to a motos or something? Kuna Matata did you say? To a motos. He doesn't know what that means. Or do you? No, it's an island chain called the Tuamotos. And do you know where it is? Yes, it's west. <laughs> East. <laughs> I had like a one in eight chance of getting that right, I think. A one in four, I would have taken like right, north, south, east or west. Okay, just one basic car as well. Yeah. No, but I, I really like this catamaran. I've always liked leopards um, but I've never spent much time on them and unfortunately because there are so many leopard catamarans in charter uh, and frankly especially the newer leopards are really built for the charter market then um, I, I've kind of overlooked them to a large extent but I really really like this boat. I like well, it a lot. Yeah, well, as I said, you know, the incarnation of a 2007 boat is going to be very different to a 2019 boat. You know, That's things right. change and boat design evolves, mm -hmm. sometimes for the better, sometimes for the worse. Yeah. But it depends on what you want. As I said, you know, one thing we have said, I always thought forward-facing cockpits were just a massive waste of time. Now, having spent a week on a boat where they don't have a forward-facing cockpit, but use the forward-facing area for kind of like relaxing, I'm, I'm sold on that. 
great Would I want a forward-facing cockpit? No, absolutely not. I'd rather have like a, like a seat that I pull out. Well, well, that's right. I mean, you know, you can have just a... Well, you want to reduce the weight and the windage right. and you want to bring everything back a little yeah, bit because yeah. I don't want to just go for... I, if, you know, if we end up getting catamaran, I don't want to just go for a slab-sided block of flats. Yeah. It's not me. I'm still a sailor and it's not about kind of like literally trying to hold on to some vestige of credibility. I do <laughs> want the damn thing to perform. Yeah. And there is a compromise on a sliding scale between performance and kind of like livability, you've got to go, you know, one way or the other. Mm -hmm. Unless, of course, you can afford like crazy prices. Yeah. Which we can't, so okay. there you go. That's all I have to say on here, Mary. All right then. Anyway, uh, off back to Tahiti. See, Tahiti. Yeah. Tahiti and Morea. So we have a, well the true wind speed is 4 knots coming from 52 degrees from the port. So basically there's no wind, it's a windless day. We'll just motor back to Tahiti and be done with it. Yeah, it's a bit bad. So Nikki, I think that we know that we're on an American boat when uh, the giant tub of pretzels come out. Yes, pretzels and peanut butter, an American pastime. Yep. Should be on every pastime. <laughs> Are you enjoying your pretzel in here? I love it. I do. I love anything that's been a barrel in I love Yeah. Am I talking? So it is what, quarter past five. We have a long, long day ahead of us. Three more flights to get back to Adelaide and then from there we've got to get back to our boat. So had an amazing time. Um, beautiful place, uh, which we are kind of, it's almost like a, an introduction to where we're going to end up with our boat. So lovely to see. Um, really interesting in many ways that we'll describe in future episodes or you know as to catamarans what we thought of them obviously we've had a hoot with Nikki and Jason it's been fantastic like we really kind of like we've had so much fun messing about and doing stuff we haven't really, really discussed all the stuff about catamarans we could have done <laughs> anyway so yeah we're gonna head to the airport we're gonna get one last coffee head to the airport hopefully get a taxi without any shenanigans get on the plane sit down sleep for 15 hours wake up in Adelaide thank you Sleep 15 hours, that sounds nice. It's a, it's wishful it's a dream. It's okay. So we are now back on our boat in Spain uh, and we just wanted to say a huge thank you to Nikki and Jason for letting us crash with them for a week. Um, we Live their lives for a week. Yes, we are eternally grateful uh, and you know the truth is that a lot of people who want to try out what it's like to live on a certain type of sailboat, they have to charter that boat for a week and chartering any boat, especially a catamaran, is ridiculously expensive. So thank you so much to Nikki and Jason for allowing us to try out life on a catamaran um, without having to charter one. So we're very, very lucky and we're very grateful. And we just wanted to round up this little mini series with some thoughts because I know that a lot of you guys have been commenting on our videos, thank you very much for that by the way, and asking us how we found the week on a catamaran. Obviously, normally we live on a 38 foot monohull, so there were quite a few differences and we just thought we'd uh, summarise them for you. So. Well, let's start with space. Yes. That's the big thing. Yes. I mean, essentially, you're looking at space versus performance. So the plus is space, the downside is performance. And those are the two big things. Everything else is incidental. 43-foot um, catamaran versus 40-foot monohull. The amount of space, I know it's bleeding obvious, because essentially it's like twice as wide as our <laughs> boat, is insane. Yeah. And as such, the ease of doing everything yeah. was incredible. And as a platform that doesn't rock around at anchor, that doesn't roll at anchor, that is stable at anchor, and that has really wide side decks and trampolines. Everything was 
immeasurably easier. Yes. At anchor. Yes. And yes. under motion. So, but more so notice about anchor. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the space in terms of livability, because really that's why you buy a catamaran. Because when you're at anchor, um, you're and you're living on it, then you know that that's the appeal. That's the great appeal. Incomparable. Yes. Incomparable, and for a couple of reasons. Firstly, the, the actual space. Yes. Secondly, the, the very nature of most monoholes, you have to go down a companionway into a saloon, and catamarans you don't because no. the saloon is raised. Yes. Even in raised saloon boats, you have to go down. I think yeah. there's a few examples, the Moody's, the new Moody's don't, and there's probably a few others that people are gonna mention, but by and large, by and large yeah. there is a large opening door. Yeah. Now, seeing as most of us who are doing this want to go to warm climes tropics yeah it's perfect yes i agree not so for high not so much for high latitude sailing but for the tropics anywhere mm. warm amazing yes yeah i really really liked that aspect of feeling connected with your environment because on our boat as with most minor holes as nick said you are in the hull when you're inside you're in the hull and so of course you can see around but you don't have that connection with the environment the same way that you do with a catamaran where you can sit down or be at the galley or whatever and you've got these big windows panoramic view all the way around and you can see the entire anchorage or obviously when you're under sail you can see everything um, as you're living inside as well as when you're outside so that was huge the thing that I uh, well let's talk about how we felt under sail because um, there's two aspects to life under sail which is one the performance and two the uh, motion and the comfort under sail so the performance first let's talk the about performance, the performance I, I am not overly keen on sailing upwind for long distances in a monohull no. I find it to be it's, oh in a monohull it's a pain in the ass yes. let's just call it what it is because the boat's <laughs> healing yeah uh, the, the boat obviously it's a good point to sail for a boat yeah. for a monohull you know if you're off the wind by about anything you know for this boat 30 degrees but most good monoholes are a decent set of sails 40 degrees 40 through 90 you're upwind and wallop off you go yeah but you know if the boat's cutting through the water it's not as comfortable as uh you know being off the wind and you know being sort of like a back to the you know yes. wind back to the beam mm. but downwind sailing mm. um i so Upwind sailing is not something I like, and trade wind sailing is tends to be downwind sailing yeah. anyway. Um, so, so most of the sailing we propose to do in the future will be downwind. Yeah. is what you're yeah. saying. So, yeah. And but you know, there's obviously a cat won't point as high. No. Um, but speed for speed, comparable. In a blow, if I was out mid Atlantic in a, in a real, you know, hooli, I'd want to be in a monohull. I would. I'm, I just. I. That, that's it. There's. There's. I find them inherently safer. Yeah, but I do think a lot of that is is um, a kind of this, I think what is a slightly out of date concept that, you know, catamarans just flip over, you know, whenever you, you stop paying attention or whenever you're in any kind of rough conditions. Do you think that there's this like reputation that catamarans have for being unsafe, which isn't really, it's, it, it, it kind of maybe harks back to racing catamarans that do flip over a lot because people are pushing them and then you know designed for a different purpose or do you think that and do you think that that, that is also because we don't a monohull is what we're comfortable with oh well let's so let's talk about the apocalyptic scenario that for some reason you're in the middle of somewhere thousands of miles from land and you get caught in a real blow yes a catamaran at the point at which a catamaran is going to flip over mm. you're going to be in a severe amount of strife in your monohull yes you are I mean, you 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 create you create a problem for yourself by being there. Yeah. So that's the first thing. Second thing, with good satellite technology, with thus able to get weather readings and go, you shouldn't get to that stage where you can't see the weather coming in. No, not with and and I think on the usual kind of milk run route, um, if you're doing it at the right season, i.e., not in cyclone season, not in hurricane season, then I mean I've. I don't see the problem with it. That you really shouldn't be running into that kind of weather if you're sailing at the right time of year. No, but let's just say that you do. You're going to have problems in a monohull and a, a multi-hull if you're in that sort of weather. And we're not talking about squalls at sea here. No. Squalls come for you, get high winds, but you don't get that kind of sea state that's just yeah. evil. Yeah. That kind of like, you know, where, you just, where you've got foam coming on the tips of waves. Yeah. 
If you're in that, I'd want to be in a monohull, but I never propose at any point in the future do I see me voluntarily going into that. No. I think really, you know, if you get caught, if you see a cyclone come along and it swings down, you should be able to get at least 72 hours of weather. But not only that, as I said, you should be sailing at those seasons anyway. But the seasons are quite It doesn't defined. matter, but it's just, I'm just, I know, I know they're defined, but what if, you know, at the, minute, at the minute, the way that the world weather is changing, we are getting more unique weather effects. That's true. Right? That's so, but what I'm saying to you is, if you've got like a low pressure, like when we were crossing the Atlantic this mm. way, this mm. time, you see it swinging in, you've got three days notice. Yeah. Or you can sit, you can sit there and go, well, that, that could turn into something like mm. Three days notice, I reckon, 72 hours at six knots, you know, you can get 500 miles from that system that, that's directly true. away from it. Yeah. And if you're still getting caught out in that, then, you know, mm. the monoholes that stayed exactly where they were, we're going to have even more problems. Yeah, so, okay, so that's obviously a big debate, you know, in terms of um, safety, cat versus mono, and, and that is something that we'll continue to yes. assess and talk about, um, you know, as we go through the research pre process of uh, hopefully looking for a uh, new catamaran, which is what maybe the next chapter of our sailing life is going to entail. Um, but to round this up, I also wanted to talk about um, comfort underway because, uh, you know, I felt a little bit seasick. And I did as well, but I think that it's just seasickness you can overcome. Yes, but it was interesting that even though we were in pretty benign conditions, very benign conditions, we both still at different times felt seasick. And I, I think it's just, it's a different motion. Yeah, I think it was just getting used to the different motion. And also when you're in the cockpit, uh, well, I guess of their particular boat, then you don't have that forward-facing um, visibility, do you? No. You can only see backwards. No. So maybe, and in a, obviously in you you do have that forward-facing visibility. Um, obviously when you're at the helm, it's different, but when you're just sitting in the cockpit, then you don't. No. So maybe that has something to do with it. Yeah, look, I think you get used to it. You would get used to it. Yeah. You get used to everything, don't you? Yeah, you do. I mean, I remember like years ago, I you know, found it difficult to go get down below when it was the weather was bad. Yeah. You know, and I, I can't cook anything. Or, you know, it's just, and now, you know, after a couple of days, I mean, I'm talking about, you know, when I'm halfway into a season yeah. and I'm kind of, I've got my sea legs, yeah. come down here, cook a bacon sandwich and a blow. Yeah. You know, and you think, but. You yeah, you, you couldn't have done that, you know, exactly. at the beginning Absolutely. of the season. Absolutely. So, yeah. you, you, so you do get used to it. Yeah, Every, you do. And even us, you know, have been yeah. doing this for a few years now, we get used to it. So, yeah. it doesn't bother me. I, I, you know, That's not a consideration. No, not at all. Look, I think to wrap this up, you know, there's probably this debate. You know, for every mon, every die-hard monohull sailor versus every die-hard cat sailor will give you the pros and cons of both. Yeah. Yeah. There are advantages to one over the other. One's one's point, you know, the ability to point as, you know, the connection with the actual yeah connection with the boat. I yeah. Mean, you, the argument is that you can't get that in a cat. Yes, you can get that in a cat. You know, you look at those bloody AC seventies or whatever that do the America's Cup. Or, you know, those things. I'm sure Ben Ainsley would be like, oh, you feel connected in this as I'm doing forty. <laughs> 40 knots up and down bloody uh, Bermuda, you know, the Bermudan waters. That's true. So, but we're talking about a cruising monohull mm. uh, and a cruising cat. Look, it's not to do with the connect. I think really, say for instance, I said to you, look, I want to do the next couple of years. I want to do a couple of two more years sailing around. I want to do some fairly extreme stuff, Patagonia, this, that, and the oh, other. Oh, okay. If I wanted to do that, yeah. it'd be a monohull. Yes, definitely. Absolutely. It'd be a yeah. monohull, you know, with, and, and that's exactly what I'd want. Yes. If I said to you, as I have said to you, look, I don't ever want to really move back to a house. I don't like the thought of moving back to a house. This is my life. I, mm. I feel like I've got a life on water. Mm. This isn't like, oh, we're learning to sail, come and follow us, YouTube channel. This is, we're sailors, we're gonna buy a camera and film it. Mm. So I hope genuinely that in 20 years time, I'm still living on a boat. Yeah. So. What about me? What are you? You're gonna behave and tidy that <laughs> bloody mess up in the cabin. So to me, for someone that wants to live aboard catamaran, as liverboards, as long-term liverboards, mm. it is better. Well, so we think. So this is part of the process. We are, we will be looking to move to a catamaran at some point in the future. When in the future, we don't know. Uh, I wish that we knew, but we don't. So when we know, you guys will know as well. Um, and But what we do know is that this season we are in Europe. We're currently in Spain, as I said, and uh, we're going to be continuing to sail Europe uh, for the rest of the season. So Absolutely. And you know, I think just the, literally the final, my final note on this is that this is Ruby Rose. Yeah. The next boat will be Ruby Rose too. Yeah. Um, 
more than likely going to be a catamaran. Yes. And I think that the it will be what we choose for Ruby Rose 3 that will really be indicative because we'll have experienced both. Maybe by then you want to go to Patagonia. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for watching this episode. Thank you again to the awesome wins. Thank you so much. Yeah. We sincerely hope that over the next couple of years we can reciprocate in one way or the other. Mm -hmm. So uh, thank you to Nick and Jason. Uh, thank you for watching our channel. We are now back in Spain. It's blowing a little bit outside. Hence you can probably see the boat moving around if you can see through the back window. And we'll be back with our usual videos soon. So goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you.